So, asking for a friend, is it ever okay to break up with someone over text? Oof. <laughs> I'm like, that's harsh. Is it okay? I mean, I think it is much more compassionate, if possible, to have a conversation with someone face to face. Look, I had to ask. It's not a dating question I can ask my mom. Breakups are hard, and the average person will go through three major breakups in their lifetime, with it taking an average of 11 weeks to get over each. Breakups end up being really hard because our romantic relationships really sort of mirror our most primary attachments. They mirror our attachment wounds, they mirror the things that come up in terms of our brain chemistry, the dopamine production that we get, and all those feel-good chemicals when we meet someone and fall in love. And so when we feel like we've found someone that we want to travel through life with, it can feel really destabilizing. Like, physiologically, there are things that happen in our body when we go through a breakup. There are changes in our heart rate. We'll feel changes in our blood pressure. Our blood starts to thicken. Our immune system can be impacted. And so we're feeling all of these like physiological things happening within us. And we start to panic a little bit. Like something horrible is happening within me. Because something horrible is happening with you. It's rare, but did you know that a breakup can temporarily make your heart enlarge? As you might've guessed, it's not a good thing in real life when your heart grows three sizes. It can cause heart failure. So with all of this going on in your body, are there things you can do to take care of yourself after a breakup? First of all, just allowing yourself to understand that the grief process is not linear. And a lot of times I think what'll happen is it'll be like, oh, I should be over this, or it was a bad relationship anyway. And so we really need to give ourselves some grace around however long it takes to feel what needs to be felt. Okay, so what if you're not feeling super sad about a breakup? Are you like a psycho if you're not grieving? No, not at all, Jay. I love that you said that because I think this is something that isn't acknowledged that often that a lot of times a breakup can feel like a relief. And so by the time we get to the point where it's like, I'm done, I'm like done for real, it's a wrap, a lot of times we're just exhausted and it can feel like a reclaiming of self. Ooh, great. Not a psycho. And if it helps to know, 75% of Americans have been dumped by a long-term partner. So yeah, people just be out here breaking up. Now, is it harder to be broken up with or to do the breaking up? This is another one of those misconceptions. I think sometimes there's an integrity in being the person that ends the relationship that doesn't get the acknowledgement it deserves. Just because I'm the one to actually do the thing doesn't mean that my suffering is any less than the person who's been broken up with. Okay, last one about breakups. Are there like any hands down red flags like, oh, I should definitely break up with you. Certainly, I feel like a diminished version of myself in this relationship. Do I feel like I'm able to be an authentic version of myself? And if I'm not, why not? You can tell a lot about a relationship when that person is not with you. If you feel like every time that person is not with you, you are really anxious, you are really sort of in that space of destabilization, that's really important information to be curious about. So Danae, thank you for joining us. I have one last question for you. How do you relationship? One of my big things that I always come back to is the practice of personal responsibility. We always have the opportunity only to control one person, which is ourselves. So if we really bring the focus back to owning our 100% and making ourselves fully responsible for the energy we're bringing into a relationship, I find it shifts the dynamics of our relationships no matter what.